Welcome to Bar 10 Explanations, today we will focus on the elements of a contract. Let's get started. When does a contract exist? When a party files a suit claiming a breach of contract, the first question the judge must answer is whether a contract existed between the parties. The complaining party must prove four elements to show that a contract existed which include an offer, consideration, acceptance, and mutual tea. Offer is a promise to do or refrain from doing something in exchange for something else. An offer must be stated and delivered in a way that would lead a reasonable person to expect a binding contract to arise from its acceptance. The person, which could also be a company, who makes the offer is the offerer. The recipient of the offer is the offeree. An example of an offer looks like this. If you repair the damaged part of your roof, I will buy your house for $125,000. Another example is, if you pay me $50 a week, I will mow your lawn during the summer. Consideration is something of value that was promised in exchange for the specified action or non-action. This can take the form of a significant expenditure of money or effort, a promise to perform some service, an agreement not to do something, or reliance on the promise. Consideration is the value that induces the parties to enter into the contract. The existence of consideration distinguishes a contract from a gift. A gift is a voluntary and gratuitous transfer of property from one person to another, without something of value promised in return. Failure to follow through on a promise to make a gift is not enforceable is a breach of contract because there is no consideration for the promise. Acceptance is when the offer was accepted unambiguously. Acceptance may be expressed through words, deeds or performance is called for in the contract. Generally, the acceptance must mirror the terms of the offer. If not, the acceptance is viewed as a rejection and counteroffer. If the contract involves a sale of goods, for example, items that are movable, between merchants, then the acceptance does not have to mirror the terms of the offer for a valid contract to exist, unless the terms of the acceptance significantly alter the original contract, or the offerer objects within a reasonable time. Mutual tea is when the contracting parties had a meeting of the minds regarding the agreement. This means the parties understood and agreed to the basic substance and terms of the contract. When the complaining party provides proof that all of these elements occurred, that party meets its burden of making a prima facie case that a contract existed. For a defending party to challenge the existence of the contract, that party must provide evidence undermining one or more elements. In general, there is no requirement that a contract be in writing, although the statute of frauds requires certain types of contracts to be in writing. The statute of frauds is a statute requiring certain contracts to be in writing and signed by the parties bound by the contract. The purpose is to prevent fraud and other injury. The most common types of contracts to which the statute applies are contracts that involve the sale or transfer of land, and contracts that cannot be completed within one year. Different states have different statutes of frauds, but these statutes typically cover six categories. The categories can be remembered by using the mnemonic My Legs. This mnemonic stands for marriage, year, land, executor, guarantor, and sales. The court reads the contract as a whole and according to the ordinary meaning of the words. Generally, the meaning of a contract is determined by looking at the intentions of the parties at the time of the contract's creation. When the intention of the parties is unclear, courts look to any custom and usage in a particular business and in a particular locale that might help determine the intention. For oral contracts, courts may determine the intention of the parties by considering the circumstances of the contract's formation, as well as the course of dealing between the parties. For more information regarding contracts, see our other Bar 10 Explanation videos for a quick review. Additionally, you can find most of the principles of the common law of contracts outlined in the Restatement of the Law Second, Contracts, published by the American Law Institute. Thank you for watching another Bar 10 Explanations. See you next time.